All right, well, it's five after. Uh, we'll go ahead and get going. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, I'll kind of get into my bio here a little bit. I know I just kind of gave a little bit of hint um, that Becky and I were kind of breaking the ice here to kind of have a little conversation. But um, I know we're all busy. I know I know it's really cold and really nasty, and it's going to get worse out according to the weather reports in the next couple of days. Um, so uh, with that, you know, some of you might have to do some online learning uh, or teaching, I should say, and some of you guys might have to do some screencasting. Um, so I really want to, I really want to make this good for you guys. Okay. So if I go start going someplace that is not really relevant for you, feel free. We're just, I mean, I'm just like you guys, I'm just another educator. Um, so feel free to reel me back in and, and email and feel free to totally ask questions. Um, you know, just pop it out there. Don't, don't throw it in the chat. Cause I'm horrible when I get on these things uh, of checking the chat. I just get going with the content, get going with the stuff. So Please just feel free just to just to butt right in. It's not going to be rude. It's not going to be anything. I'm not going to think anything of it. Um, I'll feel bad if I skip you and you, you know you're putting things in the chat. So just jump right in if you have any questions. Or if I go too fast or if I totally miss something, slow me down um, and I can totally walk through it again. So I just I just want to make sure it's very helpful for you guys. And if you guys walk away with something that that is useful for you, um, again I I'm an elementary type guy. So let me share my screen here so I can. Um, explain a little bit. I did share the PowerPoint with you guys, um, but I am um, just to work here. Uh, so I'm a teacher at Columbia School District. I've been since 1998. I started out as a fifth grade teacher in 98 um, over at what used to be Miller Elementary in Smet City. Um, so I was there from 98 to 06, and then I moved to the middle school. It was then the middle school, which is now our current upper elementary school, because they ended up closing Miller Elementary. Um, but I moved um, to sixth grade to be an ELA teacher um, in 06. And then um, with that, I was, you know, you guys know how it goes when they share, you know, when you get in a building, they find you're probably qualified for stuff. I ended up teaching some seventh and eighth grade, um, uh, different video pr production classes, things like that. And then um, after our renovation and we restructured some stuff, they uh, happened to pop open a technology job um, for our specials. And so I took that in, in 2015 and I'm still that today. Um, and with that, yes, I do tech help. I am uh, kids scrolling in my room or, you know, hey, this Chromebook's not doing this. It, it's, it's constant. I do truly enjoy it, um, but it's constant. Um, back in March when we went virtual, I ended up making 52 screencast videos for teachers and kids and parents just on how to do things um, that they just weren't prepared to do. Just like probably you guys and many other teachers and parents were in the middle of last March and April when it, when it all kind of came down. Um, so there's my contact information. You can feel free to email me anytime, um, anytime. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can with the best answer I can. Uh, that is, if you need to call me, I am in my room um, from about eight in the morning until about noon. And then I have to hop across the street. I have a totally different phone number over there, but I'm only there for two hours. So if you need me in the morning, you can leave a voice down on that. Um, it does transfer to my cell phone. So uh, feel free to call that line if you have any, any, any issues or email by by far is, is the best way to get hold of me instantly, especially in the afternoon because I'm not around that phone number. Um, and again, this is in the PowerPoint that I put in the email, so you can re uh, refer back to that if, you, if, if I go too fast, you miss the, this information. Uh, today's agenda, um, so we're just going to kind of go through an introduction, which we're kind of in the middle of right now. Um, then we're going to go to why and how I do screencasting and um, kind of getting some tips and tricks and things like that that I do, um, learn the programs, and then we're going to just do some teacher talk. I want to hear back from you guys on ways you think you could use it. I'm going to show you how I use it. I want you guys to please tell me ways that I could probably do it better. Um, like I said, I, I'm not the do all, be all of it all. I just know how to do it. And I kind of got set in my ways and it seems to be working. Um, but I'm sure there's some things that I can do better. So I really, really, really would like some uh, feedback from you guys as, as, as fellow educators on that as well. Um, and again, just we can just talk, you know, just education and different things like that. Um, so let's think about screencasting here. So the first thing I do, because I am a K-6 special teacher, so I do K-6 um, students, um, I think about who is my audience. Okay, If I'm teaching sixth graders uh, one thing in technology and I'm teaching kindergartners, that audience is obviously way different. So I have to think about my audience and the type of voice I use. 
Um, I'm pretty firm voice with my sixth graders, but with my kindergartners, I am happy and I'm joyful and I use little words and uh, things like that. So um, what, and what I think about, okay, what problem, what's the ultimate goal here? Kind of what is my I, I can statement? What am I looking to do here? Um, and what is their goal? What do I want them to learn out of this? Or what is the next step? You know, because I, I do projects, and I, I do it in phases usually. Um, so I'm like, what is their goal? Okay. And what will they need from me to accomplish these goals? Well, obviously, they need me to show them. So I'll get into my history a little bit of how I used to teach and then how screencasting kind of really reinvented me and helped me kind of do a flipped classroom type model. Um, now I was going to think about what's your skill level, okay? So I'm not going to give the first graders the same thing I'm giving the fourth graders, okay? Because now I've had these kids for so long, I know what they've done in first grade that I taught them. I know what they can do by the time they're in fourth grade. Um, so I, I try to figure out uh, the goal, okay, based on the, on the answers to those questions and how can I address them in the most effective and efficient way, okay? I'm interesting. I get to the point, especially with the older kids. I get right to the point. I don't waste time. Because, uh, you know, older kids, six, fifth, sixth graders, they're going to be gone. If I don't get to the point and get them going on their assignment, they're going to be like, oh, God, it's just it's some more lecturing again. I can't do this. So I, I try to get to the point. I try to make some jokes in there, be funny. Sometimes I actually will say, um, to prove to me you're listening, because they, what they do is they come into my room, they put headphones on, and I have it on the board. I'll talk to them just for a minute and kind of tell them, you know, steer them in the direction, give them some other little verbal uh, directions, and then they get going. And for me to know that they're watching the videos, I say, hey, stand up behind your chair and do one jumping jack and sit back down. And then the kids kind of, they get started kind of at, at different times. So one kid might be a minute or 30 seconds ahead of another kid, and they'll look up and they'll see a couple of kids doing jumping jacks. They're thinking, what in the world is going on? So I do that just once in a while just to keep them under toes a little bit. And I use plain language. I don't try to get too uh, verbiage, too much of verbiage in there. Um, and it's really, really, I learned the hard way on that because when I was first doing some pod or podcast, I'm sorry, some screencasting, you know, I'm sitting alone in my house or in my classroom and I'm just staring at a screen and I can't read faces. You know, I, I'm saying these words and, I, and I, I totally understand them, but I quickly learned that the students didn't quite understand them all the time. Some of the words I was using are phrases um, and some of the, the vocabulary I might have been using about computer terms or whatever. Um, so I really, really, really had to um, reel that back in on my own um, before I kind of talked over their head and made it too confusing for them. So, again, just because, you know, before standing in front of a class, I was able to read their faces and see if I was losing them or not, um, see how many hands went up when I would ask a question. Um, now when I'm doing it, I, I, it's just me and I'm in my head thinking, how is it going to look? Um, the biggest question I get from uh, parents and, and, and other teachers and when I talk about screencasting is, how long should the video be? Nate, how long should I go out? And we, well, I didn't know. I, I looked it up and I, I you know, I just kind of like, well, you don't want to go too long. I mean, the average video might be between three and six minutes for, for the upper L and probably about two or less for the for the lower L. Um, second grade, you can kind of get away with a three or four minute video, but it's, it's few and far between. Um, for those of you uh, lower L on here. Um, so I found this saying when I was kind of doing some research on my own uh, about a year or two ago um, on screencasting. It said, think of it like cooking. The amount of time you need depends on what you're making. Okay, so whatever I'm doing, I'm like, well, I can't just cut out an important factor or I might miss something. So I just kind of looked at it like that. You know, I, I, if I'm making lasagna, it's not going to take me 10 minutes, but I also don't need three hours to explain how to do macaroni and cheese out of the box. So that, that was a good analogy for me. Um, again, the dish determines the length of the video. Uh, similarly, your content should be um, to inform the length of your video. Be creative. Any pieces, um, just not the video, I ask two questions. Uh, do what, my, what do my viewers need to know? And how can I best cover the topic most effectively in a useful way? Okay, then I create the video. Now I'm going to show you a couple of the video uh, products I'm going to show you today. Some of them are have an editing tool in it. And I, to be honest with you, I rehearse mine big time. And I'll go over that in just a minute. I, I go, I rehearse mine quite a, quite a bit before I get into it. So I don't have to edit um, just because I'm not a very good video editor. I just, I, get, I lose patience with it. It's just not me. I'm not very good at it. Um, so yeah. So here's kind of the, the LinkedIn video. So um, 
So yeah, over here is the, you know, it, it, I mean, you can see at the top there, the, and I got this from TechSmith. They had some really good information on this. I was looking this up a couple years ago and I could not remember where I found it. I was Googling it, Googling, Googling it last week. And finally I found the TechSmith one that I, I was actually uh, looking at. Um, so you can see here that the length of video, okay? And then their attention span, okay? So about three to four minutes, that's where I try to keep mine. If I go to, sometimes I do go to six for the, for the, upper elementary like the fifth sixth graders but man i try to keep it right in that wheelhouse right there of the three to four minute um less than a minute i found is useless just because the kids are like that's it there's got to be more to it so i try i at least try to go a minute um but i don't ever try to i never try to break that six minute threshold never uh, i figure that if i'm doing that what i want to do is i want to break my assignment up i want to chunk it into separate pieces um i don't just want to do you know, a big 12 minute video, maybe I should break it down into two six minute videos or something like that um, and just tuck the assignment. And that's a, that's a bad habit I get into is just throwing all, the, all this information at kids and expect them to pick it up. And I'm like, I, I can't do that because adults can even comprehend this sometimes. So I, I just I learned to slow it down and, and, and slow the pace down. And I'm getting much better results from doing that. And here are some resources um, I got some of this information from. I had to go through and refine all this stuff. Um, that was just buried in my Google Drive as usual. Um, but these are some really good screen testing uh, blogs and sites I found. I got a lot of my information from a couple years ago, and I found some here recently in the last week or two, um, just kind of going through. Um, I found a really good grad paper uh, an educator did a, on their graduate thesis, and they had a lot of these uh, referenced in there. It is screencasting and, and the results of screencasting versus standing up in front of a board and you know doing it that way. And they, you know, this, they broke down the data and they use a lot of the, um, these in, in their, in their, um, as their resources, their references. So that's kind of that um, part there. So I'm going to stop sharing this here for a minute and just talk to you guys for a minute. So what I used to do, um, I used to get, you know, get a kid up on a Chromebook because I, the kid is standing up there. I have it on the smart board, the projector. I'd stand there and go, all right, click here, and I'd point on the board, click here. Yep. And then, all right, everybody see that? Yeah, click here, click here. Some kids, I would go too fast. Some kids, are just, they're daydreaming. They're dozing out. They're looking out the window. They're talking to their neighbor. Or they're looking at their neighbor's computer, not worried about them. And if you, I kept telling them, you guys get one step behind. By the time I get to you or realize you're one step behind, you're five steps behind. Now I got to go back and work with just those two or three kids. And put 20 some other kids on hold to work on those two or three kids and that got uh awfully frustrating for me utterly frustrating for me and um I, I just could not find a way to make that better so i was like you know what i need to give them the same screen that i'm seeing i need to explain it and then i, I started learning the video that the kids started to kind of pick this up because i would talk to them in the video like mr moore i totally missed it. i'm like hey go back and watch the video or i'll even say in the video so I'll look down at the counter on the video, and, you know, it gives you a timestamp. I'll be like, all right, guys, hey, if you lose track, go back to the three minute and 22 minute second mark, and then you can rewatch this part. And sometimes I have them, you know, the, the, the fifth, sixth graders can do this. I'll have them take a piece of paper and write down the time. I will go back and relook at it. A lot of times they don't need to. A lot of times they're, they're, they're so savvy with you know, rewinding because they're so YouTube oriented. They're so good with videos to rewind and get back to those, those specific spots that I don't. I kind of got away from doing that a little bit just because I feel I realized that they're smarter than I'm giving them credit for. Um, thank God. Um, but yeah, so I kind of got away from giving them too much detail and just getting to the point. Okay. Um, so again, I was standing in front of the classroom on point. As soon as I, one time I'm like, I told my principal, I was like, look, I said, I, 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 I got to do something. I, I'm drowning here. I, I'm getting frustrated with these kids and it's totally not their fault. It's totally my fault. And I'm frustrated with me. I'm frustrated with the whole situation. She's like, Nate, she goes, you're a technology guy. Experiment. That's what technology is all about. I said, you're exactly right. So I, I took this one class. And every year I find the one class I think can handle it. And I'm like, all right, you guys are my guinea pigs off the year. I kind of explain on the first first couple of days I see them. And they're like, and they're, oh, I get them so geeked up about being the experimental ones and that they get to do stuff for everybody else. And we find cool tool, uh, technology tools and stuff. We'll do it with them first. And so, I started doing it with them and it's a I try to find a class who is mixed where they've got some really high level kids and some really you know not so high level kids and some kids who are more introverts you know and I try to try to pick a class that, that I know them and it's usually the fourth or fifth graders that I try to do that 
and I, I know it's the first time I did it, it was like a light came out of my head and those kids were in love with it because all they had to do was come in. We had headphones and Chromebooks. They sat down with their stuff and that's it. And I sit at the board and I had a, uh, just a Google slide up there and it said, and it has a timer on it because we're only in class for 40 minutes. I had a timer going that way they can keep track of time and I keep track of time. And I just had the directions nice and neat up there. And I, I'd go up there and point at them and I'd say, all right, guys, I just want you to go in there. There's a video on Google Classroom um, under the topic, whatever it was, but watch the video. If you have any questions, rewatch the video, or I'm always here for help. Just raise your hand or bring it up to me if you have any questions. So, and it was a pretty hard, I kind of made it a harder concept of, of the assignment. I was actually doing, um, it, was in, it was in spreadsheets, it was uh, conditional formatting to where they typed something in a spreadsheet and made the cell turn to a different color if they put a certain word or number in. Um, this was fifth grade. And so, I mean, the, 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 the light bulbs clicked and, and I was walking around like, this is so much better. And so I saw them rewinding and going back and watching the video and I saw them interacting with each other going, oh, Mr. Morris, if we do this on the video and they're pointing each other's screens. And I just saw a lot more interaction, a lot more collaboration. And I also noticed the kids who are absent, because I only see them once, maybe twice a week, the same classroom. Um, I also got to the point where I got to be able to see, to, to see them working on it at home. I didn't have to catch a kid up. Um, and that worked out really well when we went to COVID here. So right now, I, I kind of want to open up some tools and show you guys some of the ones that I use. Um, do any of you guys have any screencast experience? Anybody here have any screencast experience? None? Okay, good. So again, if I go too fast or if I do something that is like, well, I, I see that again, just put the brakes on me. Tell me, hey, Nate, go back to that and I will be happy to show again. Okay, so I'll share my screen here and I'll get us to um, a website. I don't know if I can get off of this. Sorry. Let me get off of that first. All right. I got off that. All right. So. All right. So the first one I'm going to show you is it, it's probably my favorite one. Um, it's called Screencast-O-Matic. And the reason it's my favorite one, and I'll get into the in, into the different um, options of each one. And it's kind of, there's no video editing involved with me. <laughs> I'm just not a video editor, but I like this one. So the good thing is with ed being educators and you guys are signed in with your, you know, your school domain, you know, your school email address or username, whatever. Um, that's the best thing because all these are free. Now our JCISD, which I know all you guys are a part of, um, they per, they are partnered or what is something with Loom, and I'll show you that one. That's what I've been kind of defaulting to just because it's through our ISD. But this one is Screencast-O-Matic, and this is what I originally started with. Now the reason I got away from this one was they it requires you to download. I shouldn't say that. It, it has me download a separate entity onto my hard drive, onto my computer, okay? And it looks like uh, what is it? this thing right here, this red dot, okay? Um, and so that's why I got rid of that because sometimes I use a Chromebook. Well, I guess this does work with Chromebook. Now, I honestly, I have not tried Screencast-O-Matic on a Chromebook. Um, I just still use my regular uh, desktop, um, laptop computer, but... Uh, yeah, so that's the reason I got away. So just I just went in here to log in. Now the good thing about uh, Screencast Omatic is you can sign with your Google. So make sure you're in the Google Chrome with your school address because I've had a lot of teachers that I work with come to me and go, Nate, that didn't work. I'm like, well, are you signed in with your school address? And I'm like, I don't know. So the way you know that is you go up here to this corner and then you can see where mine just says Nathan's school. I had to label it school so I knew which one it was. Um, and it should be up here in this corner. If you just put your mouse over, sometimes it says your email address. Just make sure it's your school email address. But it's hit sign in with Google. And it should take me right to it and show you the content here. So here it is. Okay, so it's Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, and you can see my account up here. So this is the video editor. 
you have to pay for the premium um, version of Screencast and Mac to get all that, and it's like 18 bucks a year, maybe. Um, I, I know you can find it if you if you play around on the site a little bit. But what I do like about this one, Loom and Screencast, the five, the other one I'm going to show you is it saves your videos right here. So screencast o matic before COVID set in last March, when I used to use it, it never saved my videos to here. It would make me save it to a hard drive. Then I would upload that to YouTube. Then I would take the YouTube link and I'd put it in my Google Classroom. The problem, as everybody here elementary, I know, I know Becky is, and okay, so, so Sarah is too. The problem with elementary, you guys know, once they're done with that YouTube channel, what happens? They start playing on YouTube. Next thing I know, they're watching the, somebody play a video game or Minecraft, and it drove me absolutely insane. So I tried to stay away from YouTube as much as I can, and screencast and, and, and Loom have really saved from that. Um, so that I, I got away from loading it to YouTube and putting a YouTube link on. I got away from that, thankfully. I mean, it worked. I had to put down some policy and, and really bust the kids on it. Um, but it worked. So here's Screencast-O-Matic, okay? Um, and you can see my videos down here. I got uh, some of the different assignments I've made. Um, this is back in October, or I'm sorry, November when I was doing it. But basically what you do is you go up here and you hit Launch Recorder. And that's going to open that, that red dot I showed you on my desktop, okay? Now, there, there are some good things I like about this. Oops, launch Recorder. Is it allows you to resize your screen so what confuses the kid, the little ones for me was all these tabs I have open at the top when I'm doing a recording, that would confuse the daylights out of the kids um, simply because they're like, I don't have that, I don't have that, I don't have that. And I'm like, you don't have to have all those open. I just couldn't really understand the concept of I had 10 tabs open at the top, which is a total pet peeve of mine. It's, I, I get away with it, but it drives me crazy. But they didn't understand it because I kept saying, yours should look like mine, your screen should look like mine. And they're looking at, every little detail that screen. So I had to get away from saying that and doing that. So that's one thing I do like about Screencast-O-Matic is it will allow you to simply choose your screen. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it gives me a little black and white little screen thing right there. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, and you can totally expand that up where you can have your, your tabs in there. If you, if you should, like for me, I did do it because I was teaching my third grade how to switch back and forth between tabs because they just kept opening a new tab every time, and they'd have 8,000 tabs open. So I had to show them how to work back and forth between tabs. So that's when I did have them show tabs. But right now, I can get rid of all that. I just want the nuts and bolts. So I show them this. Okay, so this, you can see right here, I stopped it right here. Over here, okay, so this is just my screen. This is a webcam. So this would just be pointed at me, just like Zoom is right now. This is what you would see. And this is both. Okay, so it puts a little picture of you down in the corner, and it, and it shows your screen. Loom will have the same option. I'll show you that too. The one thing that I don't mind about this, going back to what I said earlier about the, about the length of time you want on a screencast, is the max time is 15 minutes. Okay, you only get 15 minutes to, to do a recording. Okay, um, and I've never gone over 15 minutes a, a day in my life of this, um, but it is an option there um, if you do more. Um, and, and maybe if you have a, if there's any high school teachers on here uh, that teach upper level, or if you're doing something for your peers, um, you know, uh, something like that, then you could probably do more 15 minutes. But anyway, then um, as you talk, you, as I talk, you can see that my microphone's working. And that's pretty much it. Okay. If I go up here and I just simply would hit record up here in the corner, and it's going to start counting me down. And now I'm recording my screen. Now, one thing I really liked about Screencast-O-Matic, wherever my mouse goes, there was a little yellow circle around it, and that made it really, really good for my students to be able to see where my mouse went, um, especially for the for the K-1, 2, 3 students, especially because they lost track of my mouse. So I, so now I when I go to a spot, because I use Loom a lot, I just simply go over and I'll just move my mouse like this a lot just so I get catch their attention. Um, but this one does give a yellow spot over over the, the mouse. And I know the paid uh, version of some of these will give you more options. I don't do the paid version of any of them just because I, I'm just, I just don't. <laughs> Feel free to, I know a lot of my teachers do do the paid version, I just don't. Um, but basically, yeah, so right now I'm recording my screen 
Okay, if I wanted to flip back and forth between different uh, screens up here, I absolutely can. Okay, with no problem. Um, if I want to show them something else, and I can scroll down and it's going to show them all that. Okay, and then when I'm done, I simply go up here and I hit the little pause button. Now, this counter up here is where I was saying earlier. So, if I'm getting to a spot that I know is going to be difficult for them to understand, I'll look up here at this clock up here and I'll say, All right, guys, you at the minute 19 mark, you can start rewinding and reviewing this part because it's going to be hard or something like that. If I simply hit stop, then I go over here and hit done. And then it asks me how I want to save it. So I was doing the save and upload or the quick share, which I can just get the link. Okay. Or I can edit my video. Again, I think that comes with the uh, premium, but I, I'm so horrible at editing. I lose patience. I, it's not for me. It might be for you guys, but it's not for me. I just lose patience too quickly with that. Um, so I just, I usually just hit the copy with one link and now it's copied to your clipboard. So now if I go to Google Classroom, I could just actually just put that link right in there. And now I have a video on my Google Classroom of the screencast I just did. Okay. Um, and kids can go back and forth to that as much as they want. And they're more than welcome to watch it. So if I did one recording, I want to start another one. I simply just go up here, start a new recording. I could start a second recording if I wanted to. Okay. Um, over here is a pencil. And I could rename this recording to something that's more relevant to what I'm working with. Um, like you can see down here, I did candy scene, school supply, breakfast plate. Those are some of the uh, different assignments I've done with my uh, students. I name them that because if I don't name them something different, I will lose it because I like to use the same stuff over year after year. Um, especially getting technology because I have K through six. So I don't want to do the same thing with first grade. I do with second grade because now when they go in second grade, they've already done it. I'm trying to keep the curriculum the same as you guys are well aware your teachers you get that um but yeah so I can go up here and I can click and I can totally rename to, to whatever I would want and then I have it okay uh, I can play it from here I can start another recording I can do whatever um and then you then it's all here okay um so the, the videos do save there's the editor if you just want to take a screenshot you can do that. Like if you kind of, I use that. I did use that tool once. I made a, a Google slide on how to copy and paste uh, for 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 my uh, fourth graders using Control C and Control V. Um, so I did a screenshot. Uh, I pulled up pictures and I did screenshots of the pictures and it was it was a whole thing. I, I probably took it, made it way harder than it should have been. Um, looking back at it, but I, I did it. And I, and I have it saved, so I, I just kind of keep using that one. Um, but that was kind of my advice is don't don't make things too hard. Um, so I know you guys probably all use Chrome and you have those Google Chrome extensions up here. Um, I don't think Screencast-O-Matic has an extension. I know Screencastify does because that is blended right with Google. They go hand in hand and Loom does. OK, and Loom is kind of my go to. Um, so, yeah, so. That is Screencast-O-Matic. Again, a great tool. I have zero issue with Screencast-O-Matic. I like it. I've never done wrong with it. Um, I just kind of got away with it because the ISD had purchased Loom or did whatever it is they did with Loom. And I just kind of went with it from there. Um, so Screencast-O-Matic, it's a good tool, OK? But again, it's all personal preference. You know, Chevy, Ford, Dodge, you know, whatever. It's the same thing, okay, whatever whatever you get comfortable with. But I guess my biggest encouragement to you guys who have never done it before is just get on it and play with it. If you screw it up, who cares? Get on there, play with it, and just, you know, um, and just see see what happens. Um, try it, try something very, very simple for your kids. Just give a morning direction. Say, hey, get on Google Classroom, guys, Why I'm taking attendance. And, you know, say, hey, guys, today we're doing this. Uh, everybody look at me and, and wave at me. And that way I know you're watching this, this first video I've ever done or something like that. Just have a little fun with it and see if you like it. Um, it saved me. It, it's really helped me, especially during, we went, we went uh, virtual back in, uh, as, as a district back in November and all the way up through Christmas break, like most schools did. And I mean, it, it was great for me because if a kid missed a Zoom, you know, because of home technology issues, they were able to get on Google Classroom and they could simply just go right to it. I had them trained so well exactly where to go and where to find it. They were able to get on there and find the video, play the video. Um, and it went really, really well.
Okay, so the next one I'm going to take you to um, is going to be Screencastify. So I'm not going to get too much into this one. Um, it's a great tool. It works just fine. Um, it's, it's probably the most basic one you're going to find. Um, kind of, it, it, it's it's easier than Screencast-O-Matic, um, but it also doesn't have the tools. Like I said, I like to, I like the kids to not see everything on my screen, meaning the tabs at the top, just because it's so confusing. Um, so Screencast-O-Matic also comes with a, a Chrome extension, okay? And I'll show you real quick how to get that Chrome extension. Um, I click up here on the puzzle piece. I go down here to manage extensions. And then over here where it says extension. So these are my current extensions I already have. I want to get a new one. I click over here and I go down here to open Chrome Web Store. Then I click that and it opens up here. Um, then I make sure it's on it. The blue is highlighted on extensions. I go up here and I type screen cast if I and I just do that. click that one and it's gonna bring it up. And then I just simply click on it, and it is that one with the, with the red arrow. Then I hit Add to Chrome, and it's just going to ask if I want to add the extension. I hit Add Extension, and it's going to add it up here. It might add it under this puzzle piece at first. Um, it's still checking it, as I say, here in a minute. It sometimes it takes just a minute. I don't know why. It's typical Google stuff. But if it ends up up here and you don't see it here, it might be up here under your puzzle piece. So just click the puzzle piece and you just, anything that's blue means you can see it. So it popped up right there. You can see Screencastify popped up right there. Okay, and if it doesn't pop up there, just click on it and make it blue and it, it will show up. So you see it went away there. I click on it, make it blue, and now it's there. Okay, so that's Screencastify. And so, now I can just simply click on Screencastify from there, and it will bring me to Screencastify website. Okay, instead of going to a Google search and typing it or putting it in your bookmarks, you can just simply have it here. Um, again, total personal preference. Um, it doesn't. There's no right or wrong answers to it. Um, you want to enable everything. I haven't used Screencastify in quite some time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna allow that. So, but this is the stuff you have to go through when you first go to use it. Um, it's going to ask you for all this stuff, the permissions. Please check if it's enabled. Um, it's going to it's going to walk you through everything. So I'm just I'm getting emails like crazy all of a sudden. Sorry. Um, one thing I hate about Zoom is all these little windows keep popping up. I can't see what I'm supposed to be doing. Sorry. So. I don't know what you want me to do here. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. So it's asking for permissions. I just simply click the thing there and hit done. So I hit the little camera up there, hit done. Can't see everything. I got too much stuff on my screen. Sorry. Um, continue allowing Chrome extension. Always black camera. Come on. Should start working now. Oh, maybe I have to do it the old way. Screen. I'll do it the old way. Maybe I haven't logged in is why. So I have to go to the website first to actually log in, maybe. And again, this is free with your with your educator Google account. Um, my account. And then you'll just sign in with Google or use your school email. Um, and you can see I already have an account here. Here's Here's the stuff. So you get free recording, unlimited. You can edit it and you can submit. And these are all zero price. I'm not quite sure what what the paid version of Screencast if I get you, to be honest with you, because I don't use it enough. And maybe I should. Again, I'm just kind of introducing everybody to tools here. Um, but again, it works the same. So I hit record. And I don't think Screencastify is going to give me the option to um, to, to, to resize my screen. To a specific area okay and you can see some of the some of the basic ones i've done before um back in 19 I, I mean i was literally playing with it just because i didn't know enough about it myself 
um, because I was using Screencast-O-Matic, but I was also using a Chromebook when I did these, and Screencast-O-Matic at that time was not working on a Chromebook. Um, so yeah, so there's all that. Over here, there's my recorder, that's where I'm at now. Okay, and then over here, you got you can delete them, you can open them in your Google Drive, and that is one thing about Screencast-O-Matic, you can put them right into your Google Drive. Okay, so if you go to Google Classroom, you can just load it right from your Google Drive, and that does make it a little bit easier um, for you. And I think the playback is a little easier for the students where it doesn't become such a hassle. Um, so, so there is that option as well. Um, but yeah, so I mean, then you can sign out, you can submit, you got the editor here. I would, again, I'm not the video editor. I, I, I'm horrible at that, I lose patience because it gets so minute where I start and stop that I have to find it within the hundredth of a second and I just lose patience with that. Um, but I mean, I, I was using a different one. I was using YouTube editor and things like that. I did use this one once. I, again, I just lose patience with it. But if you want to crop and paste, Again, I, I'm not going to get too much into that because this is that would be a whole other uh, webinar. I don't want to get too much into that. Okay, so this this kind of just walks you through, just like down in Google Classroom. The first time you're going to ask you a bunch of stuff, and you say you got it, and you can export it. Um, again, this Screencast Fight is a great tool. I don't use it that much. Um, I'm going to get to the one that I use quite a bit here in just a moment. I just kind of want to show you how to get logged into Screencast Fight. And, and what to do, okay? So, and then you can just hit the plus sign here and you can add it to your Google Drive, upload it, um, whatever, okay? So again, you can use the extension up here. Um, I, I just haven't had that much luck with Screencastify, but it is another option, okay? So my favorite one that I want to get to because we are actually running out of time already is Loom, okay? And you can kind of see I have it up here. It's this hey, blue star, yes. Um, was there a time limit on that Screencastify? There is, there is not that I know of. I, I, I did it and I did not know it's a time limit. Good question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So Loom is probably my favorite one. It's right up here. Um, if I click on it from here, it, it, it brings me right to a recording type session. Um, so again, you might want to, I'm having all kinds of tech issues here. Um, so you, sometimes you just want to kind of go to the website um, of Loom, but I'll click on it again here. Oh, it's not on record because I'm not on something. So I'll just go to Loom. Um, Loom is free to that's the great tool on um, this happened. This is just kind of fall, has been my default as of lately. And you can see I, I put a bunch of videos on Loom. Um, and as soon as it loads here, I'll kind of take you through it. But it, it's been a great tool for me. Again, you have to go in. Just hit sign up with Google um, and it should log you right in. Um, if it lets me out, sign out, and I'll kind of walk you through it here. Um, but it, it's been it's been good for me. Um, so Loom is free. So I just I simply go up here and hit sign in. Or if you haven't done so yet, you just get, get Loom now. Then you can see sign in with Google. Again, make sure you're in with your school account. And yep, that's verify that's me. And it should sign me right in, right back to where we were. Okay. So again, Loom is good because you can share the videos from here. You can add a team. So if you're doing a team teaching type thing, you're more than welcome to get on that and, and team up, um, which has worked very well with me. Just like in Google Drive, there's a start section. It's kind of your favorite video. So if you have favorite videos you want to keep, um, you're going to star them. So here's some of my videos down here, okay? And so what I do is I go down here, if I want to star, I just simply star. So the other day I had a kid who was absent. I, I, I took the assignment down thinking everybody was done and this kid wasn't. And he said, Mr. Moore, I need the video. I said, oh. So I went back in here, I just simply copied the link from right here and emailed him and he was able to pick it right up and do the assignment with no problem. Um, so that is the option. Again, starred is going to be kind of like a favorite and you just simply put it in there, okay? so. That, that that's a good feature I like about that. Um, I can go in here and I can do a lot of things, okay? I can move it to another folder if I, I wanna put it in another folder. So I'll put it in my team folder, I can rename it. I can duplicate it so I can make another one of it. Uh, I haven't found a use for that yet. If you guys can think of a way to use that, please let me know. I can't, 
I can't come up with one for some reason. You can download it, okay, if you did want to put it on a YouTube channel or something like that, or if you just want to simply delete it or archive it, whatever, okay. Um, then you can, just like kind of Google products, you can invite somebody to edit it as well um, if, if you wanted to, okay. Um, so again, this is, this is a great tool. You can see, I, I just, I mean, I used a ton of videos on it. Um, all the way down, this would be my kindergarten. I did this. Again, that was a minute, one minute video. That was just for the kindergarten. Um, I did realize that was probably a little bit too short. Um, that's when I started learning about four months ago. I was like, that's not gonna work. Um, and then I went more to the four minute videos, um, which have been way more successful for me. The, the, the five, six minutes, especially for my upper L have been where to go. Okay, so if I wanted to record a video here, I simply go to record a video right up here and I click on it and it might take a minute to open. Now this is going to bring up the stuff down here in the corner and it's going to be, one of them is going to be a picture, like the video cam is going to be on you. Now I haven't used that except for once or twice because I was showing kids how to right click on a Chromebook and I couldn't explain how to put my fingers together like this and tap. And so I was like, I literally was like, hey guys, look down here in the corner. I'm waving at them. I'm like, look down here in the corner. See what's going down here in the corner? Like two fingers like this and tapping. It, it worked. Okay, somehow I made it work. Um, so I click on record. Now you can see down here that you can have the bubble. Okay, right now it's on the small bubble. I don't know what's going on. Oh, because it's not letting me do it because I've already had my camera in use for the zoom. So it's not letting me do that. Um, let me see if I can actually get it to work. Yeah, it's because I have my camera in use for the Zoom, so it can't use the camera twice, um, which Screencast-O-Matic did. I forgot about that. But anyway, Zoom, I'm sorry, Zoom. Loom is good because it allows me to, um, to, to either put the, the picture in the corner of myself or you can totally hide it. Um, again, I hide it because I don't want kids just focusing on me. I want them to actually watch the screen. The one thing I don't like about Loom, and I haven't found a way to get around this yet, I've asked some questions I'm on a couple of Facebook groups that had the same question, is I want the yellow circle around my mouse so kids can see where I'm going, especially for the younger kids. That, that's, a, that's a vastly important piece, um, I feel. Um, so um, I, I would like to see that happen in, in, a, in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a time, just so, just so kids can follow along. And again, I don't, um, I don't like to put my picture on there because I don't want that kids start looking at me and I have kids come to me in the middle of the video, especially the younger kids, and they're, they're like, "Tomorrow, you don't have, you don't have your hat on that you had when you recorded the video." So they think I record it like second before they walk in the room. They don't realize it's done maybe a year in advance, um, things like that. So a couple things, a couple ways I approach. I'm gonna stop sharing this. I just want to talk to you guys right now. So a couple ways I approach um, how to make this is I, I practice it a lot. I pull up what I want to do. I literally rehearse it, okay? I've, I was never uh, in drama class or anything. I think I had one drama class as an eighth grade. Um, but I think I, 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 do, I do a dry rehearsal. I'll go through it in my head and I'll start talking about things. I'll, I'll even think about myself, hey, what words do I not want to use and what words do I want to use? Um, because I feel like if I get too tricky, then again, I lose them. And then they're gonna to come to me with a thousand questions, look up, I'm gonna have a line of kids with hands up or a line of kids holding their Chromebook saying next to me going, I don't understand what you mean by this. So I, I have to really be careful on what I'm explaining um, simply because I don't want confusion, okay? Because I'm not seeing their faces when I'm doing this, I'm envisioning their faces in my head, I'm envisioning what they can do. Um, so what I do, I get, I rehearse it, I rehearse it, rehearse it. Then I'll start it. Now. I've made the mistake a couple times. I go to school in the morning and I'm starting to do one during my prep time. My prep time is very first thing in the morning, eight o'clock till 8.30 is my prep time. Um, so I'm sitting there in the morning and I'll be doing it. At eight o'clock, next thing I know, my principal comes out with announcements. I'm in the middle of the screencast. I have to hit pause. Now I'm like, oh, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, I got to pick up exactly where I left off. I can't st st stop with the word with and then begin with the word with again. So I, I, I instantly, as soon as I hear the beep come on for the morning announcements, I, I take mental note of where I left off because I've done that before. I went in and I stuttered through it and it, <laughs> it made a mess. So I, I, I always try to remember where I left off. So when I do hit, I just pause it. 
I wait for an announcer to in the whole town. I'm rehearsing in my head. Where does I leave off? Where did I leave off? Where did I leave off? Then I'll go back to it. So you can pause it. So if you're at home doing something and you have a dog that needs to go outside or uh, your phone call or, or your, your you know personal kids are coming to bother you or whatever, you know, life gets in the way a little bit and you need to pause. Just kind of remember where you left off. But if you want to be good at editing, video editing, then you can go in and use uh, Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify to edit that video um, where you made a mistake. Just remember, if you're going to edit, the one thing I learned um, when I did pause it before, if I left off with the word with, when I went back on to unpause it and I knew I was going to edit it, I would hesitate for a second before I started talking. That way it gave me time. I didn't want to hit start after my pause and and immediately start talking because it gives me no time stamp in between there. I wanted a little bit of time stamp in there where I could go in and really reduce it down and see where my mistake was and then cut it out. So keep that in mind if you're gonna go to the video editing part of it all um, and do that. Also keep in mind at the end, you want you want to kind of, especially for the, the little kids, you want to send them off. Okay, what I mean by that is you want to say, okay, the video's over, what is your next direction? So I literally had, when I first started doing this, I'd be like, okay, and I would stop it. And the kids did not know they had to go do the assignment. I just showed them what to do. Okay, so at the end, I'd be like, okay, guys, so here's what you're going to do now. After the video, you're going to go back to Google Classroom. You're going to look for the assignment called Farm Animals or whatever. I, I just did that, I did that today with my second graders, uh, first graders, Farm Animals. You're going to open the Farm Animals. And you're going to do the assignment I just showed you how to do on here. If you have any questions, raise your hand or come see me. I'll be happy to help you and go. And that's how I that's how I end every one of them. And go. That way they know, okay, the video's over. I can go and do the assignment. Um, I also put on, I, I learned because, because the way I do this, and I know you, you guys are, most of you guys are in the regular ed classroom. I'm in the, you know, the technology world is, I'm a special teacher, is I also give them, what to do when they do when they finish their assignment early. Okay, I might say, all right, when you're done, go to my website, you get you know the free choice column. I have a column on my website it's called free choice. And I change it up now and again. Or if you know if it's sixth grade they're learning something, yeah, I'll put them on Google Earth or something for geography. Um, but anyway, I'll say go to the, go to your free choice uh, website and choose a free choice. And sometimes it's typing, sometimes it's coding, sometimes it's it's literally just thing I think I'll cool math on Friday sometimes I'll send the cool math. Um, knowing, and I try to keep in my head how long the assignment should take. So I have them for 40 minutes. The assignment, I know it's going to take them 20 minutes. Then I'll probably put them on typing or something like that. But if I know the assignment's going to take 35 minutes, I'll probably put them on cool math for the last three or four minutes if they finish. Some kids don't even finish it. Um, so there are some there are some tips there and tricks with that. Um, again, don't just end your video. Say, review it real quick. Tell them what to do after the video. And then say, when you're done with the assignment, then I want you to go to free choice or I want you to grab your book and go join your daily fives group or, what, or whatever, whatever you do in your classroom. Um, that's, just, that's just a hint I learned um, a while back because I would have kids, again, finish the video and they're like, Mr. Moore, I'm done. I'm like, how are you done with the assignment? You just watched the video. It took you three minutes. Oh, you didn't tell us what to do. Uh, that was my fault. Okay, I'm anticipating that fifth and sixth grader that is going to go do the assignment. That's not going to happen. I'm sure if anybody on here is a high school or middle school teacher, that's not going to happen there either. They're going to say, oh, they never said do the assignment, so I'm going to get away with it. And then it's documented that you said, never said do the assignment. So I learned the hard way. Um, so we are running out of time here. So please open it up. Are there any questions, Any um, anything you need me to answer or go over? Or just please tell me any ways that you think you can use it um, and, and while, you, while you're talking, Rob, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go quick and grab the attendance and put it in the chat so you guys can get credit for this. But um, please share with me what, um, what, how you guys think you guys could use it. Or, you know, you might say, hey, Nate, nope, I'm not going to use it. This is way too intimidating. Um, or just, just please share with me. Just, just say something. <laughs> So I have a comment um, about the loom. I was trying to use the loom and I didn't have it up in the corner. I could only, it was only showing up in an email down like where I would find an attachment. So I'm going to go back in and see if I can follow your directions because I found this loom through another one of the teachers teaching teachers. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's something I'd like to try to use. Um, and then when I 
went to find it to use it, it was only in an email. And then I was, I don't know, I'm going to have to play around with that more. But now that you showed me how to find it and with yeah, that. Little yeah, so you, yeah. Just, if you just go to the Google web store, just literally go open a Google page, go to Google web store or the extension how I showed you how to do it. I mean, I thought I did that, and I, I mean, I even taped a video, and I had a video that I sent to my daughter when I was trying to practice, and I said, hey, my, you know, here's to my daughter, and I had like a, a list of, I don't know, it was a list of some things I thought she might find interesting, and I sent it to her, and I included myself so I could see if it turned out all right, and it was fine, but then when I tried to do it again, I could only find that little web or that little loom icon in an email okay yeah so again look at the puzzle piece and see if you have to hit the the, the little blue pin and right. that will bring it out yeah so look yeah. around okay. if you have, and again, if you have any questions feel free to, to email me and i can zoom with you again and show you walk you through it or whatever so feel free okay. to contact me if you need some more help with that yeah okay thank you i appreciate yeah, no it no problem anybody else want to share or ask or whatever i'm open have, to any questions i have a comment nate sure um, uh, first of all, I'm familiar with Screencastify, and I believe Brian asked the question. There is a time limit. It's five okay. minutes for the free version. That's it. Free. Five minutes. Oh wow. Okay. And maybe yeah. that's why I quit using it because most of my most of my videos go past that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, second, I'm not a traditional classroom teacher, but I'm in more of a coaching position, and I oh, find yeah. it find it super helpful to use these kind of. Um, quick snippet videos rather than like trying to explain when you're trying to teach somebody how to do something. I get a lot of emails like, Hey, how do you pull this report? Oh, absolutely. And so I think it's super helpful in that way as well. So I just wanted to make that comment that not only to use with students, but you know, when we're trying to help each other learn new things. Oh man. Yeah. Like I said, back when COVID came, you know, March, April, we were shut down. I had teachers, Nate, how you do it? I mean, they, I mean, they're asking very basic stuff just because they don't do it every day. And man, you're right, Heather. I, I would I would just go in and make a screencast video and I would send it to the whole staff. I'd be like, guys, it may be relevant, it may not be, but here here's an email with the with the with the video link. And um, so I'm glad you said that, Heather, because yeah, I found it very helpful even for my peers and, and other adults. And I actually sent home a parent video on how to log kids in at home um, on a not not on a Chromebook because the kids didn't realize that their parents didn't realize how to log a kid into Chrome at home to get on the Google Classroom. So I, I went and made a whole video. My principal was stressing out. I just went and made a video. She posted on Facebook and, and teachers were emailing it out and it eliminated all the questions. So, I mean, I must have did a good job explaining it. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Heather. Yeah, that, that's that's good to know that you've been using it. And thank you uh, for uh, updating me and Brian. I, I didn't know it was five minutes. I probably do remember that now, but I think maybe that's why I quit. I got away from it, but I do know a Screencastify worked on a Chromebook before the others did, but Loom works on a Chromebook now. Um, and I know our, our sixth grade teachers actually had kids doing Loom um, reading in reading groups and they had to read a certain chapter and send it back when we were in, in distance learning about a month ago. So I know our sixth grade teachers were using Loom with the kids. So.